Hey, I'm Kenneth Weidstow. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly photo chats about gear that I use. So this is a camera I used a lot in the past. I haven't used it real, a lot lately, but I just recently pulled it out and I'm like, you know, this is a great, great camera to talk about. And you know why? Because this works with my limitations. This is a small pocketable rangefinder, and it's got a true rangefinder. You can always tell a rangefinder because it always has two windows, and that's what triangulates to make so that it can measure focus. And this has a really minor focus throw, and it's a coinciding focus patch, so it's just one viewfinder. But you know what this works great for? And I look for this sometimes. I look for cameras that will work with my glasses. Since I wear glasses, I like the fact that the viewfinder isn't so big. It actually, when I have my glasses up to it, I can see the whole frame. I don't have to move my eye around. That might be a limitation for me. And you might go, oh, it's just a bunch of extra space. I don't need it, I don't wear glasses. But we're talking about my experiences with these cameras. This camera doesn't have any problems for me seeing what I'm getting. And I like that. It's an Olympus RC, 35RC. It doesn't have the fastest lens on it. It's a 42 millimeter 2.8. So they made one with a F2 or 1.8 lens. I think that might have been the RD. I don't have that. This one I probably picked up for 10 or $20 somewhere at an antique store or a flea market or a yard sale. And I've used it over the years and I know a lot of people go for the Canon 3 quick load. I can't think of the name of it. QL3. But those are going for $100, $150 sometimes. The black ones are astronomical. And these aren't that expensive. I'm betting you can get one of these for under $100 nowadays. The RD might be a little bit more. But the RD's got the faster lens, but it's also bigger. But the RC35, what I like about it is I can see the whole viewfinder in it. I can see what shutter speed I'm on because it's got a little needle at the top that tells me and points to what I'm set at. It's only got shutter speeds down to an eighth of a second and only up to a five hundredth of a second. But for a little rangefinder camera, that's all you need. And one of the beauties of this over the Leica is it has a leaf shutter. So if I want to put it at an eighth of a second, and I know this doesn't have film in it, I already checked. You always hit the rewind, just rewind it without pushing any rewind buttons and it doesn't stop turning. That means there's no film in it. If I want to shoot this at an eighth of a second, at night, at 2.8, that will probably expose a negative no matter how poor the interior light is. I better make the people who I'm photographing hold still. But if they do hold still, an eighth of a second, I can probably hold. That wasn't an eighth of a second. You could tell it wasn't. You know why? Because the eighth isn't an eighth. It's a B. So B is for bulb. I've never really shot it that slow. The slowest actual speed is a fifteenth of a second. So you can't quite shoot an eighth. But a fifteenth of a second you can shoot, but you still better have your friends hold still. And a fifteenth of a second with a rangefinder and a leaf shutter, you can hold still enough because there's no mirror flopping up out of the way. There's no camera shake as a result of that mirror and all that movement. So I find that you can shoot these kinds of leaf cameras much at much slower shutter speeds. And like I said, this doesn't have an eighth of a second. When I first picked it up, I forgot it has a bulb setting. So if you want to shoot an eighth of a second, or say you want to shoot at a half a second. If I want to shoot this at a half a second, I'll put it on bulb. Here's a second. One, two, three. Here's a half a second. One, one, two, two, three, three. So here's a half a second on this. That's a half a second. I can shoot a half a second without having a timed half a second. Here's a half a second. Here's a full second. I'm never going to hardly ever do that. 
I'm always shooting people. So I really wouldn't shoot below a 15th of a second. I always say don't even shoot below a 30th of a second of people you don't care about or people you do care about <laughs> because anything below a 30th is going to blur if people are in motion at a party, say. Ideally, you could shoot this at a 60th of a second. One of its limitations is you can shoot it at a 60th of a second and you're guaranteed you don't have to worry about being quite as still on the shutter as you do when you get to that 30th and a 15th. But if you need that extra bit of light, now the other trick is you could turn a light on or bring people closer to a window or closer to a doorway where there's some light. I photographed at parties where some of my friends said, get a picture of us together. I said, okay, let's go into this hallway. There's a bunch of light in there. Where's the light when you're making pictures? Go to the light. We, shoot. we don't photograph stuff. We photograph the light on stuff. Simple camera, pocketable, small, inexpensive, Olympus RC. I would say highly recommended, especially if you're a glasses wearer, because for a person like me, I like being able to just put it up to my eye and not have to deal with looking around at all. This does that better for me than some of the Leicas. A Leica with a 35 millimeter lens on it, on an M6, I have to kind of look around. The only one I can get away with is a 50. On a Leica, a 50, I can see the whole frame without moving my eye around. This one, a 42, and I can see the whole frame. So I get a slight wide angle, not quite as wide as a 35, but not quite as tight as a 50. And handful of simple shutter speeds. If you wanted to shoot a picture outside in you know, absolute darkness, you could still put it on a bulb. You can still put a cable release in if you wanted to hold it open and not shake the camera. It's got a self timer if you wanted to have the camera self timer trip it. I've never used it. As I've talked about in the past, sometimes when I buy cameras like this, I won't use a self timer because in case they don't work, I don't want it to be in partial self timer malfunction and then now the rest of the camera doesn't work. I don't use self timer that much with these. So unless I absolutely need to, I probably would never turn that on. And it's a mechanical thing. It's the kind of thing where it's the one thing that if it fails, you're kind of like without the rest of the camera. Small, simple, hot shoe. If you want to use a flash, at least it has a hot shoe. Some of them don't. The Leica M3 doesn't. And it's an inexpensive pocket camera. Good for parties, especially if you want to go hold still. Hold still. I'm going to shoot your picture. That leaf shutter won't budge the camera. You'll get a nice sharp picture without having to deal with too much camera shake. Just hold steady. All right, that's today's photography talk. The Olympus RC with a really good 42 millimeter lens. Everything by Olympus had great lenses. They always had known for their great Zoiku lenses. Zoiku? Zuko? All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. Have you used one? What's your experience? Do you wear glasses? And if you don't, do you not like it? If you can support, hit the Patreon or go to supportkenneth.com. That would be a great big help. Or check out the swag that's available down below. And I'll be back next week. We'll talk photography. As always, here's the good light.